Urea can be pathogenic, uh, very uh, dangerous, but most Listeria is actually not pathogenic, but the pathogenic strains are quite dangerous. And raw milk is often blamed for causing infection with Listeria. Um, it can cause severe illness and fetal death, premature birth, and neonatal illness and death. We found a report uh, published in 2003 which actually gave uh, some comparisons and they found that compared to raw milk there were 515 times more illnesses from Listeria due to deli meats and 29 times more illnesses from Listeria due to pasteurized milk. Of course the big, the, well then you'll say well not many people drink raw milk so what is, it, what is the comparison on a per serving basis? That's what you really want to know about. And that's very difficult to determine because we really don't know how many people are out there drinking raw milk. But this report actually did give a number, which was on a per serving basis, deli meats were 10 times more likely to cause illness than raw milk compared to raw milk. Yet the FDA says that raw milk is inherently dangerous and it should not be consumed. Where are the FDA's charges that deli meats are inherently dangerous and should not be consumed. Why is it the FDA telling everyone charged with public health to prevent the sale of deli meats? Well, I'm sure you can answer the question. There's a lot more influence and wealth in the deli meats than there is in the raw milk. Next. We, uh, we got kind of, our interest was really uh, uh, piqued by all this talk about Listeria, so we did a Freedom of Information request from the CDC to provide data on Listeria and raw milk outbreaks. We asked for data from 1993 to 2005, or at least that's what they gave us, and that's a 13-year period. In this report, the CDC listed no cases of foodborne illness from raw milk caused by Listeria during the period. There were some cases of uh, what they call suitcase cheese. Um, we'll come back to that. But um, always found in opened packages, not sealed packages, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing about raw milk and Listeria. Soon after we got this report and started publicizing it, the Department of Agriculture in Pennsylvania suspended the sales of several dairies and issued inflammatory press releases claiming that they found Listeria in the milk. What a coincidence, you know? Uh, in all of the independent tests of this milk, no Listeria was found. So it's like they wanted to make a case. All of these press releases are still out there floating around on the internet. And they can use these to make a case against Listeria even though independent tests found that there were no illnesses. So it so sounds like the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture was trying to build a case uh, blaming raw milk for carrying Listeria after we had publicized our Freedom of Information request results. Uh, next I want to talk about challenge tests. A challenge test is where you add a pathogen to a substance and then track over time what happens, whether the pathogen increases or decreases. And we've been saying for a long time that raw milk kills pathogens, that when pathogens get into raw milk, their numbers decrease. And this sends health officials ballistic. Um, they, usually they just say, no it doesn't, raw milk doesn't kill pathogens. Uh, recently there was a so-called position paper by a woman named Amanda Rose taking the Weston A. Price Foundation to task and saying we're going to be sued because we're making all these false statements about raw milk killing pathogens. We have just posted a response to her position paper on our website. So let's look at all of these challenge tests. There are about, there are about um, eight to ten of them that we know about. The, most, the one that's uh, discussed the most was by um, uh, Doyle, Roman and Doyle. It was published in 1982. They added Campylobacter. Uh, and an amount found in about 20,000 grams of manure. That's a lot of shovelfuls of manure. Like huge amounts of Campylobacter to raw chilled milk. And even these huge amounts uh, declined quite dramatically. Um, you know, like five log reductions. 
Um, so on day zero, they added 13,000 milliliters. I think that's per liter. 13 million, excuse me. Yeah, 13 million. And on day nine, it was less than 10. Okay. Only one of them did not decline, and that was not a human strain. Oh, next, okay. Uh, then we had one that was published in 1987. This was uh, somewhere in Middle Europe. Uh, <laughs> And uh, they added Campylobacter to raw milk. And this one was interesting uh, because um, they looked at, the, it was at body temperature, it was at room temperature or higher. And yet they also got a decline. I think they actually compared this to chilled milk and the, the decline was greater in the room temperature milk. The antimicrobial components worked better. A couple more. Um, um, they found that the lactoperoxidase in raw milk kills fungal and bacterial agents and they added Campylobacter to raw goat milk and that declined to nothing in a challenge test. Here's a few more that I just found out about. Um, seven strains of E. coli in amounts of one million per milliliter were added to raw milk and the pathogen failed to grow and died off gradually. Listeria monocytogenase was added to raw milk at body temperature after 56 hours. No viable cells of L. mono were detectable. Uh, the third one, the growth of Staph aureus, uh, Salmonella, Listeria, and raw milk at 99 degrees, it's pretty warm, was reduced markedly compared to the growth of these organisms in pasteurized uh, milk. And five strains of E. coli, 0157H7, the really bad one, did not grow at 41 degrees Fahrenheit and decreased over days. So raw milk does not support the growth of pathogens. That is an absolutely true statement. Finally, uh, when we had a lot of problems out in California, uh, Organic Pastures Dairy sent their uh, milk out to a lab uh, to be tested. This is not published data, but they are happy to provide you with the lab tests. They inoculated raw colostrum and raw milk samples at 40 degrees Fahrenheit with a cocktail containing 2.4 million sam um, organisms salmonella, 9.2 E. coli, and 8.1 listeria. Now, these are huge amounts of pathogens and something extremely unlikely in a real life situation, especially all three together. Yet even with these huge amounts, pathogen counts declined over time and in some cases were undetectable within a week. And the laboratory concluded raw colostrum and raw milk do not appear to support the growth of Salmonella E. coli 0157H7 or Listeria monocytogenes. Okay. So, raw milk is basically a safe food. Nevertheless, uh, we do not recommend consuming raw milk from a confinement dairy. Uh, under the, these extreme conditions, the multiple antimicrobial components of the raw milk may be overwhelmed. Uh, there may be factors missing because of the diet of the cows that uh, prevents the whole system from working. So just to be on the safe side, we would never recommend drinking this type of milk. Uh, the irony is that uh, all of these pathogens that decline in raw milk persist or even grow in other situations. E. coli has been shown to survive on coins for 7 to 11 days at room temperature. Uh, salmonella can survive 1 to 9 days on pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And salmonella can also survive on glass and Teflon for up to 17 days. Soy products contain pathogens. Now you would, they, they, they were looking at powders, and this is kind of interesting. You think that a powder is, doesn't have water and it wouldn't um, support the, or wouldn't allow the persistence of pathogens. But when they looked at uh, not only soy milk, but the flowers and the powders and everything, uh, they found pathogens in these products. So the pathogens, they're everywhere except in raw milk, of course. So to summarize, um, uh, until recently, the, oh, excuse me, went, this isn't the summary. This is about breast milk. Until recently, doctors believe